N E W S. The Overnight Underground News Podcast. Here's today's headlines. Biden takes the lead. New York tells Florida to stay the hell away. The Seattle mayor rains on Antifa's parade. The statue mobs are getting a little handsy. And it's time to stop exercising already. Okay. These stories and more on today's Overnight Underground News. I'm John Ford. Don't look now, but Biden has a 14-point lead in the latest polling. I wiped everybody out. MSN News reports that doddering old political fool number two, Joe Biden, is making inroads with women and non-white voters. Where are the white women at? All of this, according to a new poll of registered voters by the New York Times and Siena College. Joe Biden leads a poll with 50 percent, and doddering old fool number one, Bullwinkle J. Trump, takes 36 percent. And 14% will vote for other. I don't know why you, but other has my vote too. Vote early, vote often. I'm Joe Biden. I, 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 and I approve this message. Three states in the East are mandating quarantine for Florida visitors. New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut have all set a 14 day quarantine for visitors from the Sunshine and Pandemic State. Now, if Florida could only figure out a way to time travel backwards and keep those obnoxious New Yorkers from migrating to Florida in the first place, it'd be a pretty damn good place to live. I'm dying over here. NBC News is reporting Florida joins Alabama, Arkansas, North Carolina, South Kakalaki, Washington, Utah, and Texas as states with infection rates high enough to warrant the quarantine. It's only for the simple reason that uh, we worked very hard to get the viral transmission rate down. We don't want to see it go up because a lot of people come into this region and they could literally bring the infection with them. So says New York Governor, King, and strongman dictator Andrew Cuomo. Hail Zenu! So maybe some states opened up too early and now they're paying a high price. We're looking at you, Florida and Texas. But with most states only partially open, there's still one major pressing issue that is yet to be addressed. Where the hell do you take a leak? Oh. Boy, that was some good pee. Vice News, that bastard, a bastion of journalistic integrity, points out the obvious. With public and business bathrooms either unsafe or unavailable, the good people of many U.S. cities are whipping it out in public or simply peeing in their pants. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> According to one completely unscientific poll, around 58% are holding it until they get home, and over 21% are just letting it rip in the great wide open. All the rest? Depends. Oh! It seems that even the pinko, pansy, bedwetting mayor of Seattle has finally had enough of the so-called occupied protest zone in the downtown area of that former great city. Mayor Jenny Durkin has called for the dismantling of the Capitol Hill Occupied Protest Zone, the autonomous six-block area of that city. It was just a few days ago, though, when the mayor likened the protest zone to a new, quote, summer of love. But all that was before the last 48 hours, which saw multiple instances of violence sprouting in the new summer of love zone, with at least two shootings, which left multiple injuries and one dead. The mayor is calling for the police to retake the Confederate section of the city and reoccupy their abandoned police station in the zone. What will the protesters do? Here's what one told ABC 10 News in Seattle after hearing that news. I don't trust the mayor. I don't trust the mayor at all. We will make sure they don't take back the precinct. What, what happens if the police come and try to move back in here? Good luck. What a shit show. Speaking of shit shows, the angry statue-destroying mobs are starting to get a little sporty. CBS News reports that in Madison, Wisconsin, peaceful protesters there reportedly tore down two statues and threw a beatdown on openly gay state senator Tim Carpenter. To make matters worse, the peaceful protesters who attacked the senator also trashed a statue of anti-slavery activist Hans Christian Haig. Haig's statue was decapitated and thrown into a lake by the protesters. The idiots in the mob either didn't know or care that Haig was an abolitionist who fought on the side of the Union. Still, it's also true, Haig was a notorious violent carnivore who excessively used binary pronouns. So, yeah, he totally deserved it. 
All this begs the question, how do you keep angry mobs from tearing down statues? In D.C., they're sending in the National Guard. Again, The Hill reports that unarmed members of the Guard are being deployed to the nation's capital to lend a hand to the park police to secure D.C.'s national monuments. Guard members are expected to stay in the capital through the 4th of July and may number as high as 400. Let's just ponder this for a minute. We're in the midst of a global pandemic. The president's duller than a bag of Kardashians, and millions are out of work. And what are the useful idiots doing? Tearing down monuments. Honestly? I don't want to live on this planet anymore. You need to stop exercising, and you need to stop it right now. A new study out of Japan is noting that daily strenuous activity, such as exercise, might actually shorten your lifespan. According to studyfinds.org, researchers at the Tokyo Institute of Technology found that kabuki actors with a very active lifestyle had shorter lifespans than the lazy Japanese who just sat around watching tentacle porn all day. The researchers believe that the aggressive endurance training necessary for the kabuki performances neutralizes the usual benefits of exercise. So go ahead, put a little extra mayo on the pizza, and pass the pork fat sushi. Fatty, fat, fatty? N E W S. A mostly correct and occasionally incomplete transcript and links to reference sources and articles of this Overnight Underground can be found at OvernightUnderground.com.